Lauren, you're making some interesting squeaking noises. Sorry about that. Well, good evening and welcome to the joint meeting of the Katadi City Council and the successor agency to the former Katadi Community Redevelopment Agency on Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. I'd like to call this meeting to order. It is uh, 7 p.m. And I would ask our city clerk if you could please take a roll call. Council Member Deloso. Here. Council Member Hervey. Here. Council Member Landon. Here. Vice Mayor Moore. I finally get to talk. I'm here. Mayor Stillman. I'm here and we're getting some feedback. I think it might be because you've got the speaker on the device and on your phone. Just a heads up. Okay, so thank you for the roll call, and um, now if everyone would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, and then we'll move on to item four which is approval of minutes from our regular meeting on September 22nd and our special meeting on October 1st. Move to approve. This is Council Member Harvey. I'll second that. This is Council Member Lamb. Okay, and I'll ask our city clerk if we could take a roll call vote, please. Council Member Delato. Yes. Council Member Harvey. Yes. Council Member Landman. Yes. Vice Mayor Moore. Yes. Mayor Stillman. Yes, thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to announcements. Item number five. Meeting orientation for new attendees and viewers. In conformance with the Brown Act and the adopted City Council rules, the meeting agenda includes items labeled as action items where the City Council will consider the item and citizens are afforded the opportunity to provide comments relevant to the item being discussed. The meeting agenda also includes a citizen's business item, which is the designated place on the agenda where citizens have the right to say whatever they wish. The City Council may or may not choose to respond to comments as this government code allows. However, if the City Council declines to respond, it should not be perceived as giving credence to or agreeing with any statements that the City Council or its members believe are incorrect, misinformed, or purposely biased. Measure G supports police services, a variety of recreation programs for all ages, and the maintenance of our streets, parks, and public buildings. See details on the web at katadicity.org. Citizens interested in receiving City of Katadi community alerts via text or email are encouraged to sign up at nixle.com, which is N-I-X-L-E dot C-O-M, or by texting your zip code 94931 to 888-777. Election day is November 3rd. Vote by mail ballots for the November 3rd, 2020 consolidated general election have gone out to all active registered voters in Sonoma County. Voters may return their vote by mail ballots in two ways. One, sending them back in the mail, no postage required, or taking them to one of 20 ballot drop boxes installed throughout the county. 
or voters who wish to vote in person will be able to do so at 30 in-post person voting locations in the county between October 31st and Election Day, November 3rd. The City of Katati's voting location is located at the Katati Veterans Memorial Building, which is at 8505 Park Avenue. For a full list of these voting locations, please visit sonomacounty.ca.gov backslash where hyphen to hyphen vote. It's our top priority to provide you with prompt and comprehensive customer service, and we continue to offer all city services. However, in the interest of public health, City Hall is currently closed to walk-in traffic due to the current health officer order. During this time, our services have temporarily transitioned to phone and web-based, as well as appointments by request. Staff continue to be available to answer your questions 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Like always, we'd love to hear from you, so please feel free to contact the city at 707-792-4600 or info at katadicity.org. If you have a non-emergency issue after normal business hours, you can contact us at 707-792-4611. And of course, if you have an emergency, please contact 911. Continue to look for updates on the city's website and social media channels available on Facebook, Instagram, Nexel, and Nextdoor. Next, we'll move on to item six, which is approval of the final agenda. Um, I'll check in with our city manager, Damian Obit. Are there any changes to tonight's agenda? There are no proposed changes. Okay, great. Thank you. So with that, we will move on to citizens' business, um, item seven. First, I will read a quick informational bit, and we will open it up for citizens' business and public comment for consent calendar items. Any member of the public wishing to speak to the council on any items listed on the consent calendar or any matters not listed on the agenda that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council may do so at this time. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the Council is not allowed to consider issues or take action on any item not listed on the agenda during this period. Pursuant to City Council Policy 2017-02, comments of any member of the public are normally restricted to a total of three minutes in length per person for matters not on the agenda, and a total of three minutes in, person per, um, in length for any and all items on the consent calendar. The mayor may extend the time limit for a reasonable time where a disability accommodation has been requested. And with that, I will turn back to our city clerk. Could you please check in with the attendees, see if anybody has public comment. Thank you, Mayor Stillman. And for our attendees tonight, if you would like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand icon on your smart device or desktop computer, or dial star nine if you're using just your telephone. Listen carefully for the mayor or myself to address you by name or phone number and for the audible Zoom notification that you've been unmuted. Adrian Lobby, go ahead. Thank you, Lauren and Mayor Skillman. Uh, I'm Adrian Lobby. I live in the Red Hills apartment complex, and I'm a member of four citizens uh, Katati organized um, against racism. We had some discussion after our last special meeting about um, these issues uh, as to whether we thought that the council understood a couple of our our um, requests and we couldn't come to uh, an opinion so really respectfully I'm sure some of you do understand this but I'm going to try to explain it just in case uh, some of you don't so we have asked for a couple of different groups to be formed one is an oversight of the police uh, citizens oversight of the police this is uh, something that people have been asking for across the country. Uh, we asked for it in Sonoma County in particular because there have been a high incidence per capita of police violence against people of color particularly. Um, and we just feel that generally this is a good idea and something that would be useful to our, our uh, police department as well as our citizens going forward. But in, that's a long-term project. We understand there's a lot of if, ands, and buts, and how it would be implemented is very detailed and important. So in the meantime, we've asked for an ad hoc committee. 
And this, I don't know if Katati has been doing these kinds of committees, but I've seen it in other jurisdictions, the county, the city of Santa Rosa. When they have a particularly complicated, complex problem, they often set up an ad hoc committee. Generally, it has two members of the governing board, which would be the council in this case, and then some members of the public who are kind of like stakeholders, uh, possibly some appointees or people that you know, maybe the police department. And that this is a temporary committee. This is a, basically a working group who can dig down, get into the details, try to figure out how things can work and communicate uh, efficiently with each other. And then that group sometimes brings one recommendation back to the city council or the, the board, or sometimes they bring a series of uh, recommendations. But in any case, it's always the board that has the final say. It's always you who are elected who can agree with recommendations, who can set them aside, or who can just plain say no. So we've asked for this really in the interest of moving some of these questions along. We know that uh, it's not simple to implement a lot of some of the things that we've been wanting. And uh, we're looking for a way to really have fast, quick, and useful communication with you all in, in a formal way. So uh, that's my little instructional video for the moment. Uh, sorry it's so boring. You don't even get to see my smile. But um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Okay, thank you very much for public comment. And with that, we'll move on to item eight, the consent calendar. Uh, and there are two items, item A and item B. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member DeLosso, and I move to approve both items A and B on the consent calendar. This is Council Member Harvey. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'll ask Lauren if you could please take a roll call vote. Councilmember DeLosso. Yes. Councilmember Harvey. Yes. Councilmember Lehman. Yes. Vice Mayor Moore. Yes. Mayor Skillman. Yes, thank you. Now we'll move on to item nine. I'll um, look and see if any of my fellow council members put a hand up for um, direction on future agenda items. Okay, seeing none, uh, we will move on to item nine, which is our regular agenda, the um, authorization to record affordable housing funding agreement on Jamie Lane subdivision property. And with that, I will turn it over to our city manager, Mr. Obed. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. So, um, uh, for, well, first of all, before I start, I just wanted to um, let the council and the public know that um, with us tonight we have Dev Getches, who is the executive director of um, Sonoma County Housing Land Trust, and um, she's our partner, or the Housing Land Trust is our partner. She's our contact with um, Housing Land Trust on that project. So she's here tonight. Um, if there's any questions, she can um, maybe help answer. So um, the Jamie Lane subdivision, uh, most recently on June 9th um, of this year, the city council adopted a resolution um, finding the project exempt from the requirements of CEQA and approving the requested vesting tentative map and design review for the proposed Jamie Lane five lot residential subdivision project. And this is the undeveloped property near the smart station at the corner of Ryan Lane and East Katati Avenue. Um, so following the city council approval, the Housing Land Trust, um, who, as I mentioned, is our development partner for this um, currently city-owned property, uh, has been actively seeking construction funding to complete the project. And um, one component of the construction funding that has been put together for the project is $100,000 from the Sonoma County Community Development Commission. And, um, and I'll talk about that in a second more. Um, I'll, talk, I'll talk more about that in a second. So um, after after the um, final plans are put together, these are the final improvement plans and the final map, then we will be back um, before the city council to, um, to seek approval for those documents as well as an affordable housing agreement. 
and following, um, you know, presuming the council approves that, following, for, you know, formal approval of all those documents, those are essentially then construction ready documents and the property, um, as part of those approvals, the property would transfer uh, officially to the Housing Land Trust. In the interim, uh, the Housing Land Trust needs to um, move the documents from the entitle entitlement sets that were approved in June to the construction um, documents that will have to come back to the council. And um, part of the funding to get it to basically ready is um, the Sonoma County CDC's $100,000. So um, in the packet, there's a draft agreement that, um, that Housing Land Trust and CDC will enter into um, as a condition of the funding from the county. And um, CDC has been in contact with us and requested that we um, send a letter and there's a draft a draft version of that letter also attached to this um, to this item that describes well it outlines sort of what the um, uh, what the arrangement is and also um, authorizing the county to record this document on the property it's the county's um, ultimately when the housing land trust owns the property it's the county's um, sort of guarantee that that the money will be spent for affordable housing and um, if it's not spent or the project isn't constructed for some reason, then Housing Land Trust, who is the other party to the agreement, um, could potentially be subject to penalties. Um, but the city originally acquired this property many years ago with redevelopment funds, and um, <clears throat> it's been designated for many years as, as uh, uh, basically workforce housing. So it's completely in line with the long-term vision for the property. Presuming um, council approves the action tonight and Housing Land Trust finishes up the construction documents, um, we'll be back to council sometime this winter to get final approval and everything. And Housing Land Trust is currently scheduled to break ground and start construction on this project in the spring of 2021. Um, it's my understanding that Housing Land Trust has acquired all of the um, all of the funding needed to construct the project, and it's just um, basically getting everything ready for um, good weather in the spring. Uh, one other thing that was a big win, I would say, for the project is that um, through the hard work uh, from the dev and the others in Housing Land Trust, they acquired, um, as part of this capital stack for construction, $875,000 from the California Housing Finance Agency, it's, uh, otherwise known as CalHFA. And um, the dev can probably talk to you more about this, but basically it's um, our project is a um, is a model that, that the state and others are looking to um, to hopefully bring more um, workforce and affordable housing to the market and um, deal start dealing with the housing crisis that we have in the state. So with that, I mean, that's that's my report in a nutshell, unless you um, have anything that you'd like to add to that. This is uh, Mayor Skillman. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Skillman, City Council members, staff, and members of the public. I am so delighted to be here with you. We have uh, worked with you before. We've got a land trust project already in Woodland Hills where we have five land trust homes, and uh, we've been working on Jane Lane for a really long time. And uh, with the $875,000 from College of Bay, we are now fully funded for the project and the homeowners will be able to afford a home with a 30-year fixed mortgage, and uh, we can house our workforce, and we will keep the homes affordable in perpetuity by holding the land in the trust and embedding the resale formula in it that ensures that when the home is sold again, it is as affordable to subsequent owners as it is to the initial homeowner. Um, we are so close to breaking ground, and I just want to a big thank you to Noah and to Damien, of course, who we've known forever, and all of your staff and consultants for, for pushing this forward. And um, I do hope that we can get approval for this 100000 as we bridge the time between getting through the entitlements to uh, having the land transferred so that then we can break ground and uh, also acquire the state funding. As, as, um, as city manager, 
manager Obed um, mentioned, this is a prototype project that is being uh, not just watched, but actually documented. We are writing a paper and creating educational tools um, at the request of Fannie Mae in Washington, D.C., and the director for disaster recovery and resilience of Fannie Mae as well, so both policy and disaster, to replicate the Jamie Lane prototype around the country in disaster areas because we address so many issues here. Uh, one is the use of underutilized land, such as in fills that are in safe areas. Secondly, the sharing of making this pencil. So we are partnering with the city of Katadi, of course, and with the county. So we've got local, regional, state with Calachafe and the governor's passion for uh, increasing the supply of affordable housing, and then with Fannie Mae on a national policy level so that we can show that if we all come together and we all put our resources, the cost does not have to fall in any one entity. And uh, then with a nonprofit, we can hold that and steward that as community wealth forever and also give our workforce an opportunity to put down roots, stop renting, start owning, and have the opportunity to also build personal wealth in a manner that's also paid forward. So it's not a windfall, but it is a chance to stay and live and work locally and have that nest egg. So um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I will also just add quickly that uh, the uh, Turner Center for Innovative Housing out of UC Berkeley is collaborating with us to write the paper uh, with uh, uh, two grad uh, students that are completing uh, their master's in city planning, and this is their capstone project. Uh, we only needed one person, but it was a very popular um, announcement, and so we got two. <laughs> um, we're, we're really excited to, um, to share this nationally as well. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your uh, comments, and it's great to hear that we may uh, finally get this project done, which would be fantastic to provide more workforce housing in our area. Um, all right, so right now I'll bring it back to Council, see if there are any questions. Uh, Councilmember Harvey, you've got your hand up. Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, this <laughs> building projects is one of those things that it seems like it takes forever. It feels like we take one step forward and two steps backwards. So this one has been going on for really quite some time. So it's wonderful to, to see it make another step forward. So that is really pretty awesome. I did have a question and I don't know whether it's Noah Damien or, or someone on packet page 37 under item 16 it says monitoring expenses. Um, the whole paragraph is lined out, but not the item itself. So I, I wasn't sure whether there was replacement words that were supposed to be there or whether that whole item was supposed to be eliminated. So that's sort of my question. And thank you for all that you've done to move this forward. It's really pretty exciting. And we'll have to hope that it makes more steps forward. So, uh, Mayor, I get a quick stab at that. Um, that is part of the agreement that the county and Housing Land Trust will enter into. And um, I presume that it was stricken as part of the negotiations between Housing Land Trust and the county. Um, so, I, as it reads, it would just be eliminated. Um, I guess it's just a placeholder. But that's my understanding, that it's basically been struck. Okay, so the heading will stay there, but no words after it. Is that? That just seems a little odd, but I guess if that's what was negotiated, it it would probably just be like Article 16 omitted or something like that. Oh, okay, because that part wasn't struck through, and I would have expected that, you know, the first part of that um, 16 where it says monitoring um, expenses would have gotten stricken through too. Yeah, no, I understand. It's, it, it is odd to leave a heading there. There's no text after it, but I, I think it would probably just be, if it is actually in fact stricken, it would just probably re, re, uh, it retain the numbering, but have a heading of like omitted or something like that. Okay. 
Thank you for that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Of course, and I don't see any other hands up from council. I'm pausing just in case I'm being too quick. Okay, um, so uh, with that, I will open it up to public comments and ask uh, Lauren if you could check with any of the attendees to see if they um, have public comment on this item. And Lauren, it looks like you're, oh, there you go, okay. Thank you, Mayor Gilman. Marjorie Grove Shears, go ahead. Can you hear me? Can, okay, I'm gonna say it. I just wanna say, bravo, brava. I'm really glad this is happening, thank you. That's it. Mayor Skilman, back to you. Okay, thank you very much for the public, uh, for the public comment. Um, and yes, it, it is very exciting, and we've really been trying to move this forward for a while, so I'm glad that um, we may be in the home stretch here. Uh, so I'll bring it back to council, see if there are any comments, um, or if we've actually already heard enough or we want to move forward. Uh, yes, Councilmember Harvey, go ahead. Well, if there are no other comments, I would be happy to make a motion. This is Vice Mayor Moore. I would second that motion. <laughs> I think she has to make it first, but hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, Susan. Yeah, you are the only hand up. Okay. I make a motion to authorize the city manager to send the attached letter, as well as authorize all actions necessary to permit the recording of an affordable housing funding agreement, both in substantiality, the form attached for the Jamie Lane subdivision property. And as Marjorie said, bravo. This is Vice Mayor Moore. Are you saying that a presumption of a motion is not enough? I would, I would second <sighs> Council Member Harvey's motion. Perfect. All right, we have a motion and a second. I'll ask Lauren if you could please take a roll call vote. Council Member Deloso. Yes. Council Member Harvey. Yes. Council Member Landman. Yes. Vice Mayor Moore. One item you think we get it right. Yes. We have to keep things interesting. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much, um, uh, Dev, for being here tonight and um, all of your work getting this done. So we appreciate you. Um, now we'll move on to item 11 for the city manager's report. And I will turn it back to Damien. You, Mayor, members of the council. So um, first off, I just wanted to let everybody know that there has been some um, Press around a public safety power shutoff uh, warning each and issued earlier in the week. Actually, um, next Sunday, I think, over the weekend. Um, so it's designated, Sonoma County is designated as a watch area for a PSPS on Wednesday and Thursday this week. Um, this is due to high winds, heat, and low humidity conditions. Uh, according to PG&E, in Sonoma County, power may be cut off for areas east of Cloverdale, Asti, Geyserville, and Porter Creek near Calistoga Road. Parts of the communities of Kenwood and Glen Ellen could also see outages. Um, Katadi is not expected to be impacted at this time. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then in the, um, I also wanted to let everyone know that that uh, if, you've, well, if you've been following um, the police Facebook page, you'll know that the police recently set up a, a, uh, an online form on the website for reporting traffic violations or um, just complaints about traffic. Speeding is the typical complaint. Um, so it's available and on our website, you can go to the police page on the city website and select the button for traffic enforcement request. And that goes straight to our traffic officer. So if you have a complaint about traffic, Please, um, you always can call, of course, but if, uh, if you don't want to do that, you can, just, you can just do it directly through the web form. Um, you all might have also seen a whole bunch of uh, reconstruction going on, and um, we just appreciate everyone's patience as the outer hub streets um, have gotten repaved. And even Olaf and William had to also go through a sewer reconstruction recently, so there's been a lot of activity on that uh, side of the hub. And, in particular. 
The good news is the paving work is nearly complete with only, um, the only work remaining really at this point is uh, raising utility valves and like manhole covers and then striping and speed humps and those, um, those types of items are, are upcoming. Um, the, the, uh, what they call raising the iron, that's, that's uh, bringing, bringing up the utility valve boxes and the manholes that's supposed to happen this week and I believe striping is next week. Um, the method of construction that was used is very similar to what was done in the L section, which is called full depth reclamation recycling of the existing roadway material. So it's a lower cost approach and it's also more um, environmentally sensitive because rather than digging out the failed roadway and um, bringing in all new construction materials, they're able to recycle a lot of it in place and um, only really remove a minimal amount of material and really just bring in new asphalt. So it's, it's, um, it's kind of a win-win for streets that have um, passed, the, uh, passed the point where they need to be fully reconstructed. Um, one last thing as part of this project is the parking lots. Um, you may have noticed the various parking lots around downtown. This is the one, so there's three of them, right? There's the um, one downtown. This is um, behind Katati Coffee and uh, Friar Tucks, that one. Um, also the one next to the old Dos Amigos, where we, that's at the corner of uh, West Sierra and La Plaza. And then um, the third one is between the, um, the Lions Scout Hut and the Rancho Adobe Fire um, District Station right there. So um, they've all been, um, the asphalt has all been repaired in those three lots and um, we expect a slurry and striping to also be done here in the very near future as part of the same project. Um, uh, one other thing I will, I will point out is Part of uh, Valparaiso was also reconstructed, the part between West Sierra and the creek, which is so much nicer now. Um, it was in pretty bad shape before. Um, <clears throat> West School Street Pathway Project. This is at the end of uh, West School and going down Richardson Lane. So work on this project is wrapping up this week with the completion of the fencing that runs along the elevated part of the path. And um, this project provides a safer and more accessible path to the Thomas Page School and for recreational walkers and bikers. And I've already seen um, uh, several people walking on there a couple times. I've been out there to look at the project. So it's great to see. And um, the city is also very close to securing a, Cal a Caltrans encroachment permit to install an all-way stop at West School Street and West Sierra Avenue. This is a longstanding um, request due to visibility issues there as you come down West School Street and the relatively higher speeds of people coming down West Sierra. So we expect Caltrans to issue this encroachment permit next week and um, the signing of striping would be rolled, uh, rolled into the streets project as the striping happens for that project. That's the plan. Um, also on last thing on streets, uh, city public works crew is out on Redwood Drive. I saw, um, I saw them out yesterday, in fact, uh, painting out the, um, the areas that needed to be repaired. And so they're um, doing pothole repairs and, um, and fixing uh, par portions of Redwood Drive that need a little love before the, um, the pavement management plan gets around to that street and does a full repave. Um, in the community development world, so there's, there have been some preliminary regional housing needs assessment numbers um, circulating. These are based on the latest AVAG methodology and um, it's looking like we, as well as basically everybody um, in the Bay Area, will be getting a large increase in the housing allocation for the next Lena cycle. And um, it's looking to be more than double the current number of housing units. And so um, just for example, our current eight-year cycle, we have 137 housing units we're supposed to produce over the eight-year time period. And um, some preliminary numbers have it in the three, 350 unit range for the fiscal years 23 through 31 through, so for that eight year cycle. And there'll be more discussions um, soon about this. Um, I anticipate we'll be having a discussion with council just to um, talk about this in much more detail in the near future. Um, economic development, so the tents um, that we all talked about a meeting or two ago are, are on order and um, we expect them early to mid November. So you'll start seeing some of those come up or go up around downtown to assist the businesses as we start moving into um, the uh, late fall and winter. And we're working with businesses and the Chamber of Commerce on this just to make sure that we uh, try to take into account everyone's needs as we um, set those up. And um, 
We're also moving forward on the final design of the next phase of the wayfinding program, wayfinding signage program, including the downtown business kiosks. So um, we also even, um, we're also reaching out to the Chamber of Commerce to develop a program to maintain and replace the signs in the kiosks once they're installed. And so uh, we had a brief discussion with the Chamber tonight about it, actually, um, where we would be uh, putting up, uh, we as in the city, we'd be putting up uh, these kiosk signs around downtown um, with a more permanent type map installation and um, changeable uh, signs for business names at the map locations. And so we're trying to enlist, and the Chamber seems very open to that, um, to, to help out with um, maintenance of those business lists and those kiosks. So that's good news. Um, admin services, we just reviewed our second quarter um, 2020 actuals today, and um, admin services is also completing the audit and field work uh, this week, and I think maybe into next week. So they're pretty swamped right now, but um, uh, they plan, we do plan to provide an update to city council at the next meeting on the year-end actuals and um, also continue the monthly reporting for fiscal 2021. So the second meeting in October, um, I know we've been doing a generally in the first meeting in October, but because of everything going on, we, um, we moved to back one meeting. So um, next meeting, you should see that. Also, the big news is um, the GFOA, which is the Governmental Finance Officers Association, awarded the city um, their second consecutive um, PAFR, or Popular Annual Financial uh, Report Award. And so this is, um, every year, you know, all cities are required to do um, fiscal year-end audits, and um, the city already goes, <clears throat> the requirement is for a basic financial audit. Um, the city does a comprehensive annual financial report, which is sort of the gold standard of financial audits. It's the most um, descriptive, has pretty much anything you'd ever want to know about any aspect of city finances. Um, but it is, a, it is a big document, and so um, what the PAFR does is the PAFR really distills it down into a couple pages of of the high points and really what's relevant to the kind of the average person that doesn't want to really dig into a, a document that's hundreds of pages along that hundreds of pages long that goes into all sorts of financial details. So um, anyway, we, we won our second consecutive award for that, and um, it's a big achievement for the city and um, for the city council and staff. It also um, basically states that this panel of independent reviewers um, thinks that you know, we represent the highest principles of transparent financial reporting. And um, they look particularly at a focus of overall quality and usefulness, um, reader appeal, understandable understandability, and how we distribute it to the community. So um, this is posted on the city uh, website, and you can find it through a headline. It's on a posted headline on the city website. So anyway, great news there, and congratulations to Angela Porter and her staff and admin services. That's a, that's a Big deal, and it also adds to the awards that we also get for the CAFR, which is the full annual financial report and the budgets as well. So um, they're going to need to get a display case pretty soon for all these awards. And then um, on recreation last night, or last Friday night, we hosted our first drive-in movie this year showing Coco. Um, it was sold out. We had 50 vehicles, um, and it was almost all families, which was great. So it was an overall success, and we look forward to our next one, which will be on Friday, October 23rd showing Hocus Pocus, and um, this event is also already sold out. But we do have a wait list um, started because we do expect that as we um, lay out the parking spaces, we may have some more slots available. We're also taking sign-ups for our Trick or Treat, Trick or Treat Road Show um, Halloween Parade through the Potty Neighborhoods happening on October 25th, where families can have candy delivered to their children in a safe manner. This event is free, but um, sign up early because the space is limited. And um, uh, we're hoping the road show, by the way, is kind of like a parade, and we're hoping to uh, uh, have um, a lot of decorated cars and police, and even if, if fire is available, hopefully they can join us. It be, um, should be a lot of fun for the kids. And then also for our online, uh, we also have an online pet costume contest happening now, and you can do that by emailing us a photo of your dog, cat, small or large animal in their best costume for a chance to win prizes donated by local businesses like Your Pet, Your Pets Market and Katati Dog Groomers, so two local Katati businesses have donated for that. And then lastly, we have a Katati Candyland Trick or Treat Outdoor Candy Path in partnership with over 20 Katati businesses where children can safely collect candy outside of each, um, each stop. 
And then um, switching gears from Halloween on uh, Monday, October 26th, Food for Thought will be at the community center behind City Hall collecting donations at a drive through food drive drive up from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They're accepting all non-perishable, non-expired food items, but specifically are looking for tuna, peanut butter, and olive oil. Um, that's a weird combination, but hopefully they're for different recipes and not all for the same thing. Uh, and then Thanksgiving camp, uh, Thanksgiving break camp registration is also open, so you can sign up online now for camp during the three days off before the actual Thanksgiving holiday when parents have that time off. So we'll be following the same health guidelines as we did during summer and expect a full week of fun. And for more information on these recreation programs, you can always contact Ashley Wilson at 665-4222 or awilson at katadicity.org. And of course, you always can get all this information um, on the city website or the city's Facebook page. And with that, I would be happy to answer any question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I'll bring it back to council, see if there's any questions for city manager. Um, Councilmember Landman, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I heard the word earlier for tonight seemed to be bravo, uh, and there's more than a few here. I wanted particularly to start and congratulate you and the police department on the moving in the direction of an online process for people in the public to easily uh, make requests for traffic enforcement for areas that they're finding problematic. I think this is something that will be very well received, has been widely needed, and a very good 21st century approach. Uh, I want to ask if there's a possibility to continue to publicize this a little more. Uh, perhaps it's something we could mention in one of our uh, regular newsletters in our water bill, potentially even be put on our downtown sign at some point. Uh, it, it's funny, it is obviously it's reporting that you're doing online, but I think sometimes some people may miss some of our online uh, media venues, and uh, this would be a great way to make sure we catch everybody, because I'm sure a lot of neighborhoods would be very happy to hear about this. Um, one thing I wanted to mention for the West Katati pathway, when we get to our checkoff list for that when it's complete, this may already be on there, but there is a large drain at the base that collects multiple streams that come in and has heavy metal bars that go across it. But during construction, two of the bars have been removed. Right now, it's not a huge issue, but later, when when the rains come in a few weeks uh, and the rains get heavier, that could be somewhat of a danger. So I just wanted to point it out. We've noticed through walking, I've had other people mention it to me. So if we could make sure that's on the list to make sure it gets done, that would probably be good for everybody. Uh, and lastly, for the whole neighborhood of the West Side, thank you for the quick action on West Sierra and West School. Uh, that stop sign will alleviate a lot of people having to look, can't see a thing, and then just step on it and hope for the best, because a lot of people are obviously always speeding up to get out of town and always in a hurry to get back in. So I, I think with the visibility there, we can't fix that, so at least we can make the stop sign and make everybody safe. So thank you for all that. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm not seeing any other hands up. All right, so we will move on. Thank you, Damien, for that um, report on all those items. That's great. Um, so we'll move on to item number 12, the um, city council member reports. Um, and uh, I will start it off to say we had the uh, League of California Cities annual conference um, October 7th through the 9th, so it was last week. And um, it was a bit of a challenge trying to do it remotely. Um, it went well for all of the presentations for the most part. Um, there were a lot of interesting topics that were covered. Um, and uh, so I really I did enjoy being able to um, attend virtually. Uh, the only big uh, snag came when we were trying to do the voting. Um, so anyway, um, if there's any information or anything that looks interesting, I'm going to have access to all of the information. Uh, all the presentations and everything, I believe they said they would leave it up for two weeks on their website. So um, I'll try to get uh, maybe um, a list of the presentations and then I can share it with council and see if anybody's interested in accessing the information. Um, and then coming up on the 20th, uh, there will be another uh, library advisory board meeting. And that is all I have to report. So I see two hands up. Uh, Councilmember Landman, go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, two items to bring up and report.
report on from yesterday's Sonoma County Transportation Authority. First of all, an update we had discussed earlier, a potential e-bike sharing system coming in as kind of a last mile between the train station and the communities uh, moving forward. And that is beginning to happen. We're going to be looking at something like 300 e-bikes from a company called Gotcha Mobility. And these will be spread along the Marin Sonoma uh, smart uh, areas uh, for all the communities that have stations. Uh, this is funding for a three-year trial to see how this works. And the next step in it will be some outreach that will begin this November, basically getting feedback from the public to go along with the technical analysis they're doing at the same time to determine the numbers of bikes, uh, how many go at each location. Uh, that's kind of what's up in the air right now. So. If you live in Katani and somebody reaches out and asks you if we need e-bikes here, answer yes. Uh, the goal for this is for it to launch in spring of 2021. So that might be a perfect time. Some of our concerns about health might be hopefully better at that time. And this might be a service that people can use. So we'll keep our eyes on that. So that was the good news. And along with it, uh, there's always the bad news. So yesterday's meeting was relatively close to Halloween a scary time of year, so it's a perfect time to talk about arena numbers. And we actually did talk about those yesterday. And uh, I want to point out that thanks to the work done by the Sonoma County uh, Planning and De Community Development Directors Working Group, uh, they, even in a very short amount of time, they had a chance to review the data that backed up some of these new numbers that are being requested. They found some truly significant errors in the data analysis and the result of this was a demand for development in some places it would be kind of hard to develop such as cemeteries parks schools floodplains uh, so obviously there's some problems with that and this working group did send a letter to mtc and aimbag requesting uh remedies for these problems uh after discussion, I was able to convince the board of directors, including three supervisors, to vote unanimously to send a letter supporting this request. So we had elected officials backing the staff on this as well. We will see uh, what happens with this. But uh, as staff reported earlier, the requirement for numbers are trouble. 97% increase for Katati, 250% increase potentially for Sebastopol. Everybody sit down for this one. 919% increase in the unincorporated areas of Sonoma County. And Petaluma hit with 182% increase. Um, so a lot to discuss about this, uh, but I will say that for most of us listening to the report yesterday at SETA, there weren't a lot of smiles. So we'll watch that and see where it goes. But I wanted to thank our community development director, Noah Hausch, Hausch who played a rather significant role in this process, I understand. Um, Thank him for his work and efforts to look out for the interests of not only Katati, but everybody in this region. So I appreciate that. And that's my report for this meeting there. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that report. And I see um, Councilmember Harvey, you've got your hand up. Go right ahead. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so a few items on uh, 924. I worked at the booth that um, Katati um, held for the bike to work day. Um, we didn't have as many people as we usually do um, because a lot of people are um, working from home, but we did have um, some number of people come by. They knew that Katati always had one, so they came out anyways um, to come and visit with us. So that was really nice. And they got a bag and had a cup of coffee and some snacks and stuff. So that was nice. Uh, nice, and it was a beautiful morning, so it was great. Um, I also attended the League of California Cities conference. It was kind of different um, with sessions being um, online, but I also attended the North Bay Division um, luncheon um, and was uh, sworn in as first vice president on the North Bay Division um, League of California Cities, so that was pretty exciting. And then I attended the Santa Rosa Plain Groundwater Sustainability Agency meeting. And there's just what, it was kind of exciting because we've been working on the, it's hard to believe that it's been a few years, but we've been working on the um, 
sustainable groundwater management plan. And we actually, there's a lot of studies and technical things that have been going on, but we were actually presented with our, um, there's sustainable management criteria and uh, the five criteria that we kind of have to look at for sustainability are chronic lowering of groundwater levels, significant and unreasonable reduction of groundwater storage, significant and unreasonable degraded water quality, significant and unreasonable land subsidence, depletion of interconnected surface water. And we were presented um, with the first one of these management criteria for the land subsidence. So it was great to get one of them kind of, it's in draft form, but it'll come back to us again, but it was kind of exciting to have our, our first um, criteria kind of reviewed and put forward. Um, in addition, um, with all the fires and COVID and all of that, they still haven't been able to launch the well registration. I know we only have, you know, a handful of, of wells within uh, Katati city limits, but um, the well registration, it's getting closer, it looks like, and they are um, trying to get it out uh, this winter. So we will do a little bit more um, outreach. I was um, nominated to be put on or volunteered or however you want to put it to work with the um, outreach ad hoc committee. So we'll be helping, you know, get people make sure that they register and they understand what Sigma is and stuff. And then just lastly, I love the CAFR report, and so I can't wait to get my own CAFR report. So thank you, Angela, for all of that, because I like all those details. And that's all I have to report, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you. And uh, Councilmember DeBasso, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mayor Skillman. Um, just several meetings, and I'll try to be brief on reporting out on those since our last regular council meeting. So September 24th was the monthly Sonoma County Ag and Open Space Advisory Committee. And um, there was, you know, a number of, there's always good things. Uh, the staff there really, in my opinion, mirrors Katati staff, that they, they're both fantastic groups of dedicated, passionate people. Um, but probably one of the more shocking bits of information is that uh, the general manager, Bill Keen, was going to be leaving, uh, all on good terms. Um, he said with all the things that have been going on this year um, and, and many climate change related issues, he wants to go back to doing what he got his degree in, which was planning for climate change and resiliency of landscape. So um, he, the scary part is, as he said, he goes, I don't have a job, but he goes, I'm gonna go out and look for one. So, um, but he's been the general manager at Sonoma County Ag and Open Space for almost 12 years. Um, he started in 2008. There were about 20,000 acres um, at that point in time, and he's added about 60,000 acres. Actually, it's closer to 80,000 acres now that I think about it. Um, They've refinanced the debt from 4.5% to 1%, saving the taxpayers about $20 million. Um, and, you know, 12 years ago, there was $80 million in the bank, and today they still have $65 million because they are very adept at leveraging funds from a variety of sources, from nonprofits and government institutions and so on. As a follow-up to that, of course, there was an article in the Press Democrat last Thursday about Bill stepping down. And to my surprise, I read in the article that there are three people who are going to be interviewed today, Tuesday, at the Board of Supervisors meeting in a closed session. And where these three names came from prompted me to write a um, moderately scathing email to all the board members, the Board of Supervisors, as well as um, County Council, saying that, you know, my, my long-standing relationship with Ag and Open Space since I've been on the Council um, as a committee member or chair of the advisory group, and the significance of what is now, in my opinion, and many others, a national program and model 
for preserving both agricultural lands and open space for, with public access. So from that email, I actually had three supervisors respond to me directly, which I thought was good. Um, one supervisor agreed with me wholeheartedly and said, I'm going to take your concerns to this meeting. A second supervisor said something similar, and a third supervisor did, wasn't very committal. So I still have not heard what occurred today um, in the clo at the closed session, but my hope and my intent was, if you're looking to pick an interim general manager, then even that should have been a little bit more broadly advertised, but do so in such a way that it's very clear and in writing that this is for a three to maybe six month period to then go out to do a national search and select some incredibly highly qualified individual who is no doubt there's a number of them out there. But um, it just, it was interesting how that ball evolved. Like I said, you know, we heard about it directly from Bill Keen and then I, I read about it in this, the Thursday paper that they're having a meeting on Tuesday and I go, well, you know, the, the agenda had to go out no later than Friday for that Tuesday meeting. So I was very uh, upset by the way it was handled. So I don't know the final outcome, but I will um, find out as soon as I can. So that was a September 24 meeting with some follow-up to it. Um, of course, we had our police meeting on the 1st of October. Um, there was a lot of great uh, additional community input and um, amazing work that our city staff, and thank you to the chief who I know is on the call this evening, um, for the amount of work that's been done and the amount of work that is still in process, um, because not everything happens too quickly and, and overnight. So uh, anyway, so that was good. And then finally, on the next day on October 2 was the Health Action Council. And um, I guess, uh, you know, there, were, there was just a, a number of issues. I was trying to summarize this, but it was a little too broad uh, to summarize, but just suffice it to say that a number of different ideas um, are always moving around and uh, with this group. And, um, and I believe this has now turned into a monthly meeting as well. It used to be a quarterly meeting. So I will certainly continue to uh, report out anything significant from this meeting. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you for your report. <clears throat> and that looks like that is all of us. Oh, Vice Mayor Moore, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm just reporting out on the REMF meeting of September 24th. The uh, REMF board, governing board, and uh, Redwood Empire Municipal Insurance Services has been working for a couple of years with the Public Agency Risk Sharing Authority of California, or PARSAC, and they have voted to merge and adopt the bylaws. Uh, the official documents and presentation to the city for the city of Katati's vote on that will be coming up at the next meeting, so you'll get a much greater in-depth knowledge of that. But uh, overall, it's going to uh, increase efficiencies and uh, hopefully reduce redundancies and just make it a better organization all the way around. So you'll get the uh, follow-up to that and uh, the next council meeting. And that's it on that one. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And uh, with that, we will move to item 13. I'll ask Lauren to check. I can see if any of the attendees have public comments on the non-action agenda items for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Marjorie Grubshers, go ahead. Thank you. Um, you know, before I forgot to say that I live on Mattery Circle and I've lived in Katati for 10 years. Um, and I'm a member of CORE. Um, but right now, I want to go back to my first career of 33 years, and that was in public education. And let's talk about the two terms, bravo and brava. Bravo is wonderful, and we use it a lot.
but it is the masculine. Rava is the feminine. And there are times, as there were tonight, when both are appropriate to use, bravo and brava. And I just wanted to share that with you. That's number one. Number two, I want to circle back to Adrienne Lavi's comments earlier about uh, an ad hoc citizens committee and police oversight. Um, CORE has done a lot of work researching options for our city. And we would like to present the information that we have to you in a formal meeting, such as a city council meeting, in November. I don't know quite how to do that. It's probably on the website. But I would appreciate a phone call from someone um, informing me so that I can inform our committee about the best way to go about getting an agenda item on the City Council agenda for one of the two November meetings. And that's it. Thank you. Mayor Stillman, back to you. All right, thank you. Um, and with that, we'll move on to item 14. I'll just check in with Lauren. Was there any information received after our agenda was posted? Nothing further. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for attending tonight. Um, we'll return this meeting at 8 o'clock. Please, everybody, stay safe and uh, take care. See you in two weeks.